couple of people have mentioned that they have trouble with the open buttonhole filler stitch. So I thought I would do one, a couple of them. And the first thing I'm going to do is draw sort of a rough shape. It doesn't have to be a beautiful circle. It can be kind of an organic circle. It can be more oblong and depending on what the shape is, it's going to tell you what kind of stitching. So if you had something, say, that was really organic, right, sort of had kind of a different, you know, areas that are big and small and so let's just say that. Um, then I would not try attempt to do this in the round because uh, it's got like a little a little dip in here and so yeah I just I wouldn't I wouldn't attempt I would I would do it going across back and forth back and forth. This one is round enough that I can do it in the round. And even this one is round enough that I can do it in the round. Whether you do it in the round or if you do it back and forth, it's going to give you a different look. And so that's something that you need to decide right off the bat. But the first thing to do is to do a back stitch. It can be in a different color thread. It doesn't have to be in the same color thread if you want a little bit of a contrast. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do my back stitch. If you don't know how to do a back stitch, I'm going to put the video of that up in the right hand corner here. Uh, there'll be a little white dot and you just click on it and it'll, it'll drop down a menu with all the videos I've embedded. And then you can click right on that and it'll take you to that video. And then I'm going to come back and we'll start on the back stitch and I'm going to do them in a couple different varieties of threads as well, thread weights, so that you can see a more lacy open effect and a more dense um, effect. Okay. A couple things to keep in mind when you're doing your back stitch and also finding threads for uh, the thread that you want to stitch with. This is a sheep silk from the Thread Gatherer and it's an eight weight. I'm, I've got it on a 24 chenille and I'm keeping these back stitches um, kind of medium size. They're not tiny, but they're not huge either. And I wanted to pick this thread because I wanted it to be lacier. Now, if I wanted it really lacy, I would also alter the size, the length of my back stitch. I would make it bigger. Um, the larger your back stitch is, the larger the back stitch is, the more open the uh, the open buttonhole filler stitch will be. And so that's something to keep in mind. Um, I don't worry too much if it's not totally, uh, each stitch is, you know, a little different. These are actually getting a little bit bigger as I'm talking, but, um, the other, the odd shaped one, this one, I did using this, which is a, well, it's at least a three weight um, thread. And, and I kept the stitches about, they're kind of small, so for this weight thread. So when I go back and forth, this is gonna be a much denser open buttonhole than this will be. This is going to be a looser one and a more lacy one. Um, I also thought that I might try to put a hole in this one to show you that you could do that. But this video, if you want to see that, it's this, this video is going to be for my patrons over on Patreon. You're welcome to sign up. Uh, it's I do a video a month for all my patrons, and this will be this month's video um, stitching an open buttonhole filler stitch in an irregular shape with an opening in the middle. 
for the rest of you, I'm going to continue doing my back stitch here, and then we'll start doing the up open buttonhole filler. I'm going to be doing it left-handed, and I'll be doing it in the round. This one I will do right-handed, for those of you who are right-handed. I'm going to come back when I finish doing the but the back stitch all the way around. All right, I've done my back stitch around. It's not um, a perfect little oval or anything like that. I'm not going to worry about it. It's going to be it's going to be fine. I'm going to come up between two of the stitches right here, and I'm going to be working clockwise. I'm going to take my needle and I'm gonna go right down through that back stitch just to the right of the one where my needle's emerging. And I'm gonna pull this up. Now remember, I'm gonna keep this very open. I want it to be a kind of lacy, open effect. So I'm going to even do it a little bit exaggerated. This is the way that I typically go clockwise in the round, but I think that that is also the way you might do it if you are right-handed. Um, so I am going to do it again, going counterclockwise later in the video, but I tend to just go clockwise. So you must try which way works best for you, whether it's going clockwise or counterclockwise. If you're left-handed, you may be a bit ambidextrous as I am, and one way will feel better than the other. And just do that. Around to the left. I'm going to go ahead and put my needle through the back stitch just to the right of this one. And I'm gonna make sure that my needle is going over the thread that's looping around. So the thread is looping this way, and I'm putting my needle through the back stitch, making sure that the thread goes over the thread that's, that's looping around. I want to keep these fairly similar because it's going to show if I change suddenly, and suddenly one is much loopier and the other, it's going to have holes in it. So I try to keep this fairly even. So needle through the back stitch, making sure that the thread is looped around and that this thread goes over that loop. through the back stitch, looped around to the right, needle over that loop. Now because this is an oval, it's going to be denser right here at these curves and not so dense uh, here as I work around. So as I do this, I'm gonna to have to be aware of where I'm decreasing. I'll be decreasing much more often around this curve. All right, so I've come full circle, and now I am going to go into this next loop instead of into a back stitch. So I'm just gonna treat this just the way I treated the back stitch. I'll go in here. I'm going to do the same at the top. I'm 
I'm going to skip this one and go in here. If they're too dense, you know, that's what I'm going to do. Skip that one, go in this one. I'm going to st skip every other one as I go around. So skip that one, go in here. You can also switch to a tapestry needle at this point if you prefer. Skip that one, go in here. Skip this one, go in here. And now I'm back to where I started. So I'll come in here. I'm going to skip this one, go into this one. At this point, I think I'm going to be skipping every other one. And I'll go into the next one only because I skipped that one before. And I'll go back to skipping. Now at this point, I definitely am skipping every other, and in some cases I may skip even more. I just have to see because I'm getting very close to the center. To, this is going to be my last little bit. I'll probably have these two stitches right here. And I'm going to go right into the center here and anchor my thread. So that's a much more open, kind of lacy looking open buttonhole filler stitch. It's still dense. It's still not really, really lacy. I would have had to have, as I said, made these back stitches about half the amount, much wider. But you can still see the fabric underneath. So I'll go ahead and do the back stitch around this one, and then we'll start going around using my right hand for you right-handers. But before I do the right-handed, I just want to show you the going the other way for left-handed, which is going counterclockwise. Um, I've, I try both. I typically just do going clockwise, but if you're left-handed, try both and see what works for you. So you're going to come up between the two stitches. And 
and you're going to go through that loop through the stitches through the loop making sure I anchor it with my right thumb so that I'm making sure that that thread is going off to the right. Go through the stitches. Through that back stitch and over the loop. So it creates this little twisted loopy guy. Go into the next stitch, trying to make sure that they're all about the same size loopiness, but I'm not going to worry too much if they aren't. This is going to be a much more open buttonhole filler only simply because I've got a very, very thin thread and I made my back stitches much farther apart. And that really dictates how lacy and open it is. Okay, so I've come full circle and I'm gonna go right ahead and skip this one. And I'm gonna go right in here. And that's because I'm making this so loose, it's really lacy. And I'll go ahead and do this one, but I may skip the next one. I'll have to see. Yeah, I think so. These are pretty far apart, so I feel like I can get away with just going into each one, but up here where it starts getting this curve, I'm going to skip one again. Right there. I'll go into this one and I'll skip the next one. See, I think I'll skip that one too. Then I'll go into this one. And then I'm going to skip this one and go into this one. And then I'm going to go into this one, because it's a pretty long one. But now, I'll skip that one. So, as I said, there's not a real, um, there's no set rule here. You just have to look and kind of decide which one looks like you can skip it and which one looks like you need to grab it. And at this point, I really only have a few more stitches to do. And that really is it. I could do one more. In here, and that's going to be it. And so I'm going to anchor my thread by going right into the middle there. And 
And there's a much sort of lacier open buttonhole. Is it even all the way around? No. Does it matter? I don't think so. So there it is. All right, so I'm going to do this one for right-handed. And I'm going to come up between two of these stitches with my thread. Then I'm going to come down through this stitch. I'm working clockwise. And I'm pulling my needle through and over the thread that's looped to the right. I'm going to go down through the next stitch. I'm not going to pull this tightly because I want to give it a kind of lacy look. It's not going to be really, really dense. And then I come down through that stitch, pull my needle so that it's going over the loop. Go through the next stitch, through the loop. Trying to be aware of my tension, making sure that it's the same throughout. Go through the next back stitch, making sure my needle goes over the loop, through the back stitch, needle over the thread. I'm going to keep doing this all the way around. Now I've come full circle, so instead of grabbing onto a back stitch, I'm going to go right into a loop, but I'm going to skip this first loop here and go right into the second one. I think I might skip that one and go into this one. If I wanted it more dense, I wouldn't skip. I would go right into those loops. I will skip this one and go into this one. Skip this one and go into this one. I'm going to skip this one and go into this one. Skip this one and go into this one. And then I'll skip that one and go into this one. The other thing I'm doing is I'm making sure that I'm not pulling the fabric beneath by, by pulling these um, loops too tightly. I'm keeping them pretty relaxed because I don't I don't want to change the shape of the fabric. I want this to lie nicely on the top and not change anything. So let's see, I guess I'll go into this one and I'm going to skip the next one. And I'm coming up pretty quickly now to the end. I'm going to skip that one and go into this one. And that's really going to be it. I'm going to go right into the center here, and there it is.
I'll do one more that's denser and that goes back and forth. Okay, so I'm going to come up. Now, when you go back and forth, it's going to be the same thing, whether you're right-handed or left-handed. <coughs> if you're right-handed, you're probably going to come up on the left side and go this way for your first stitch. If you're left-handed, you're going to start on the right side and start this way. But once you go back and forth, it doesn't matter which hand you're using because you're having to go in what would be typically a more left-handed direction or more right-handed, you're going to have to go back and forth and be ambidextrous. So my first stitch, I'm coming up between these two. Now, as I said, I'm going to keep this pretty dense. I'm going to take my needle and go through the back stitch, making sure that my loop is coming around and my needle goes over it. I'm now going to go through the next one and the next one and this one. And now, because I'm doing it back and forth, I'm going to stop. What I like to do is I like to go right into the next stitch like this. come through this one like this and now I'm going to go the other direction and I'm going to pick up this loop here and then I'm going to pick up this loop here and I'm going to pick up this one And then this one. You can change to a tapestry needle if you prefer. I don't bother. You can also use the back of your needle. I find for teaching purposes it's confusing visually, so I use the front. What I'm essentially doing is adding a, a loop at the edge by coming through that side stitch. Go through that one. And this one. And this one. And this one. And this one. This one. And now I'm going to go through the side here. It's going to be a little, that's going to be my added stitch. And come back here. And Come back the other way. Next loop. And I'm going to go through here. Come back down through here. And I'm going to continue. Now one of the things that can happen is it's very easy to start pulling the fabric because it's too tight and so the fabric underneath starts to pucker. So I try hard to avoid that by just being aware of what's going on and not pulling too tightly. But you can see how dense this is compared to the others. For those of you who want to see the shape uh, take, take
take form with this center part left open, you can go to my Patreon page and sign up there. For everyone else, thanks so much for watching, and let's keep stitching together. <laughs>